Burnt Offerings is a psychological horror film that explores themes of family dynamics, isolation, and the supernatural. Adapted from Robert Marasco's 1973 novel, the film features a haunting narrative that unfolds in an old, sprawling mansion that serves as both a setting and a character in its own right. But, one of the key reasons I was drawn to Burnt Offerings is that, despite being one of the more overlooked films in horror, it features a remarkable star-studded cast, including some of the most iconic actors in the genre's history. Karen Black, who plays Marion in the movie, had already become a cult figure through films like Trilogy of Terror and Five Easy Pieces. Oliver Reed, who plays Ben, the father of the family, was a British actor famous for his intense and often unpredictable roles in films like The Devils and The Curse of the Werewolf. And of course, there's Betty Davis, a Hollywood legend whose career spanned decades, who might be most well known by modern audiences because of her eyes, which ironically were used on the movie poster. The film begins with the Rolfe family, Ben, his wife, Marion, and their young son David, searching for a vacation home. They end up looking at a sprawling but decaying mansion, where they are greeted by the peculiar siblings Roz and Arnold Allardyce. The siblings rent them the house for a strangely low price, with one condition. Marion must take care of their elderly mother, Mrs. Allardyce, who lives in a mysterious upstairs room and never leaves. Intrigued by the mansion's grandeur and the exceptionally low rent, the family decides to take it for the summer, unaware of the malevolent forces that lie within its walls. As the Rolfs settle into their summer retreat, and then are joined by Ben's elderly Aunt Elizabeth, strange and unsettling events begin to unfold. Marion becomes increasingly preoccupied with the care of the house and Mrs. Allardyce. She takes on the responsibility of preparing the elderly woman's food and delivering it to her room, although Mrs. Allardyce is never seen by anyone but Marion. Over time, Marion's fixation on the house grows stronger. She becomes detached from her family, spending hours alone cleaning, polishing, and restoring the house to its former glory. At the same time, the house itself begins to transform. Small signs of its restoration appear, but only after accidents from the family. After Davy hurts himself playing, a dead plant starts to grow again. Ben cuts his hand on a champagne bottle, and a dead light bulb is mysteriously repaired. Ben, who was initially excited about the peaceful summer retreat, begins to feel the oppressive and malevolent energy of the house. Ben starts to experience terrifying nightmares, which are probably the most iconic scenes of the film. The nightmares include a recurring vision of a grinning hearse driver from Ben's childhood who he remembers from his mother's funeral. The driver, grinning and ghostly, haunts Ben, symbolizing his growing fear and helplessness as the house tightens its grip. The hearse, traditionally associated with funerals and death, becomes a harbinger of doom, foreshadowing the tragic fate that lies ahead. Ben becomes increasingly paranoid, sensing that the house is somehow feeding off the family's energy. His fears are further confirmed when David has several near-fatal accidents. During one incident, Ben almost drowns David while playing in the pool, as if controlled by an external force. This event shakes Ben deeply, not knowing what is happening to him, but Marion downplays it, insisting everything is fine. Aunt Elizabeth, who started the summer as lively and energetic, begins to age rapidly and deteriorate under the house's influence. She becomes bedridden and weak, and eventually dies suddenly. This further deepens the family's sense of foreboding, especially for Ben, who becomes desperate to leave the house. Marion, however, is fully under the house's spell and refuses to leave, becoming more obsessed with both the mansion and her duties to Mrs. Allardyce, who has still not have been seen by anyone except for Marion. When Marion does not attend Aunt Elizabeth's funeral, Ben angrily confronts her about her obsession with the home and decides to leave the next day. Ben later sees old shingles and siding falling away, replaced by new ones as the house restores itself. Now convinced that the house is a living entity, Ben attempts to escape with Davy, but a tree blocks the road. 
then breaking down, falls catatonic. The next day, while Davy is swimming and a catatonic Ben is watching him, the pool water turns into vicious waves, pulling the boy under. Marion rescues her son, and the incident awakens Ben from his catatonia. Marion agrees that it is time to leave, but insists on going back inside to inform Mrs. Allardyce. When she fails to return, Ben goes inside to find her. He is horrified when he discovers that the elderly woman upstairs turns out to be Marion, who has inexplicably aged. I've been waiting for you, Ben, she says. Ben recoils in horror. Waiting in the car, Davy is shocked to see his father plummet from the attic window, landing on the car's windshield. In shock, Davy runs toward the house and is killed when one of the chimneys collapses on him. Afterward, the Allardyces return to the home and are marveling at the restored beauty and rejoicing over the return of their mother. In Mrs. Allardyce's sitting room, the photo collection now includes portraits of Ben, Davy, and Aunt Elizabeth. The Rolfe family's decision to rent the large, luxurious mansion represents their yearning for an elevated lifestyle, a hallmark of middle-class aspirations. The house, with its grandeur and history, symbolizes the wealth and prestige the family lacks but desires. They are willing to overlook the house's eeriness and the strange conditions tied to renting it simply because it offers them an opportunity to live in a manner they wouldn't normally be able to afford. Marion, in particular, is drawn to the mansion and its potential for restoration. Her obsession with the house's beauty and historical significance reflects her desire to belong to a higher social class. As she spends more time cleaning, decorating, and restoring the house, she distances herself from her family, prioritizing the house's outward appearance over the well-being of her loved ones. This social climbing aspect of the film is shown to be their downfall. The house and burnt offering serves as a metaphor for the destructive nature of consumerism and social climbing. While the mansion appears to be a great deal for the family, the true cost of living in it is far greater than the Rolfs initially realize. The house doesn't just demand money or effort, it consumes the vitality and life force of its occupants in exchange for restoring its beauty. Burnt Offerings is a haunting exploration of psychological terror, family breakdown, and the consuming power of a malevolent house. While often overshadowed by more popular haunted house films, it offers a unique take on the genre by focusing on the slow erosion of a family under supernatural influence. The film's deliberate pacing, chilling performances, particularly from Karen Black and Oliver Reed, and its eerie atmosphere make it a forgotten gem in horror history. With its layered symbolism, psychological complexity, and unsettling conclusion, Burnt Offering stands as a compelling example of 1970s horror, showing how desire, control, and fear can ultimately lead to one's destruction. <laughs>